Welcome to Essentials Week 4, um, and this week we are studying uh, Jesus Christ, God the Son. And so last week, if we remember correctly, we are in we were in the Trinity, and I know that one was a little bit of an ear melter uh, for many of us. Um, that is one of those, uh, those topics that's just really difficult um, for us to really grasp and wrap our minds around. And so um, I hope that that was helpful to you. Um, In the very least, I hope that it gave you some memorizations um, because sometimes it's just good to know um, and believe something and know that it's there simply because you've memorized it. Um, I believe that you're going to be able to remember this um, and and use it. Um, And you can go through and prove it, get used to it in the Bible. Um, And so I hope that you're able to do that. As we're coming into week four, this should be a somewhat shorter video than the Trinity, uh, but we'll see. If you're in this week, um, you're about to get started in it. It is a lot of content, but it's broken down a little bit smaller. uh, So that will be helpful, I hope, to you guys um, instead of the larger chunks that the Trinity came in. That was just the way that that one came together. And so our opening statement for our Essentials week four is this, I believe in the deity of our Lord Jesus Christ, in his virgin birth, in his sinless life, in his miracles, in his vicarious and atoning death through his shed blood, in his bodily resurrection, in his ascension to the right hand of the Father, and in his personal return in power and glory. And that comes from the Gospels, from Hebrews chapter 2, verses 5 through 18, from Revelation 22, verses 6 through 21. Yes, I cheated a little bit, got away with uh, just using the Gospels, uh, because they all tell that very similar um, story, just from four uh, different perspectives on the same events. And so um, I felt like that would be easier to just say that rather than Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. If you get a copy of the Essentials document that we actually use in-house here, it actually does have um, all of those broken down, and, um, and maybe that's helpful to you. Um, But for today's purposes, the document that you have in the course uh, will be uh, that easy, just the Gospels. Um, So we're going to break this down just a little bit, and we're going to start out with the deity of Jesus. um, And on your lecture notes, it'll say uh, the deity of Jesus slash God the Son, because these are the same person with two natures. Now, we're going to talk about this a little bit in a second, but I want to clarify for us that Jesus truly is deity. He is God in the same way that God the Father is God and the Holy Spirit is God. We talked about this last week with the Trinity. You can refresh yourself uh, on that um, in last week's videos. One of the clearest examples of that, and there's another passage that you can go and look at, but I think the clearest example here is in Hebrews chapter 1. And and Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 7, sorry, 1 through 3, says this. Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God in the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Verse 4 as well. Having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. This is an amazing verse that's pointing us to see that Jesus truly is divine. He is so much more than we could possibly imagine. John chapter 20, verse 28, uh, shows us, I think, an interesting um, account. Thomas, doubting Thomas, as many of you know him, um, he, is, he comes to Jesus and he uh, puts his hand, uh, his fingers, in the, the wound holes from the crucifixion after Jesus' resurrection. Now, as grotesque as that is, I think it's done for our benefit because when we see this in verse 28, He's talking to him, and he does this, and he goes, oh, he's amazed, and he recognizes that Jesus truly is resurrected, and this is his words. He says, Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. The important thing that we want to focus in on, not that the rest of it isn't important, is in verse 28, Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. And so right away, 
Thomas recognizes that Jesus Christ is God and yet is also separate from God the Father. And so we talked about that at length last week. Um, to take honor for yourself um, as God would be called blasphemy if you are not actually God. As we can see in Exodus chapter 20, this is one of the famous passages in the Old Testament, the Ten Commandments. And in those couple of verses, verses 3 through 7, God talks about this when he is uh, writing these words for um, for the people of Israel. He says, You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers and the children to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the Lord, name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. So we recognize a few things about God through that. One, that he is a jealous God, and he will not have other gods before himself. And so for Jesus to be recognized as God, he is either blasphemous, which we know he is not through the rest of the Gospels, or he truly is who he says he is. And I think that is the better conclusion. So that leads us to a couple of, I think, important questions. Is Jesus a hybrid of God and man? Is he just a man? Is he only God? There are a few bad ways, those are a few bad ways to view Jesus Christ. And so we're going to go out through a couple of those. And you'll notice on the back, um, if you're accessing this online, there'll be the second page of that document, will just simply be the Chalcedonian Creed um, or the Chalcedonian definition. And so if you go to see that, it's on the back if you print that page out, if you have those printed out pages. Um, that will go into much more detail in the videos and everything that we have in the course will go into more detail on this. Uh, but I wanted to point out a few bad ways because we always like to point out uh, the bad ways that we have understood this over the years. Um, at one point or another, uh, groups have believed this, and the whole church has come together and said, no, that's not the, the correct way to understand this. Um, one of them is that Jesus is a demigod, essentially, uh, meaning that he is the mix, he is the, the melding of the divine and the human. He has one person and one nature. That will make more sense as you continue in your courses. Um, but that is a helpful definition. Uh, demigod, uh, and that would be called monophysitism. And there is a, I don't even know how many uh, letter Scrabble word uh, for you all to use. Uh, the second one of these is that he was simply a man, that he was not God. He did not, um, he was not actually the son of God. He was just a man and he was adopted by God. Now, there's a couple of ways you could see this. Um, it could be docetism, uh, which was a had a much larger impact, or it could just be simply adoptionism, um, basically meaning that, that God adopted this man, Jesus, as his son. Uh, we don't believe either of those things. Uh, we believe that God the Son came into the world. Uh, the third one is that he only appeared to be a man. Uh, he was God, but he, you know, he just came and it's kind of like an illusion. And this was very popular in Gnosticism and sometimes rears its head still today. And then the last one is that he is just a manifestation of God the Father. This was known as Sibelianism. Um, it also would be known as modalism. Uh, we just talked about this last week with the Trinity, and I hope that you guys, that's ringing a familiar bell for you guys today. Um, next, we're going to study a little bit. So we've gone through the deity of Jesus and slash God the Son. Now we're looking at the virgin birth and the miracle stories. Now the reason I put these together, um, and I should better say miracle accounts, and the reason that I put these together is that the virgin birth is a miracle, uh, just as the resurrection, just as many of the things which Christ did. And so we're going to talk about that as a category. Um, Luke 1 and 2 uh, recounts for us the virgin birth. We know this story. If you've ever, ever been around church for very long, uh, you will know that Jesus was born of a virgin, which is impossible except for with God. And in the course, we have a long discussion of why 
God does miracles. And I think that's just so amazing that God chooses to reach down into the natural and break the order that we expect to happen. And so um, I hope that you guys would pay attention during that section. John chapter 2 verses 1 through 12 uh, recounts just the wedding at Cana. I wanted to give you guys just a small, um, not a small miracle, every miracle is amazing, um, but, a, but a pretty easy to digest one. This one has witnesses. Um, they know that it was water and then they know that it was wine and know it was not grape juice. And so they want to they wanna point, um, point all of this stuff out. And so um, that can be very helpful, I think, um, to us. Uh, on my point on the grape juice, it's a, there's a much longer discussion uh, to be had there um, around the translation of the word rendered wine. Um, so if you want to look into that, that's awesome. Um, that is not part of our thing. I should not have brought that up. I apologize. Um, so why would we believe in miracles? Well, we believe in a God who created everything at his only word. And so we would reason that it makes a lot of sense that this God could do other things that don't involve creating something out of nothing. It makes sense once you believe in a creator God that he can intervene in human affairs. And that's what he does in miracles. And see, so these are breakthroughs of God into the normal way that we operate. We expect water to flow down a hill. God may cause it to flow uphill. I mean, just weird things like that that go against correct physics, but yet God does it because he is all powerful. The third section that we have today is sinlessness and atoning death slash resurrection. And these are very important Things Because as we read through believing in the deity of our Lord Jesus Christ and his virgin birth and his sinless life and his miracles, we kind of skipped around a little bit, and his vicarious and atoning death through his shed blood in his bodily resurrection. Now these are amazing truths of the scriptures. And so I wanted to send us there. Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews talks almost exclusively about Jesus Christ um, and some of the mysteries that surround him. This book is amazing. It is deep, and so I hope that you would read it. Um, Hebrews chapter 4, verses 15 and 16. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are. And here's the kicker, yet without sin. And so we recognize that Jesus Christ is without sin sin. And that allows us to, with confidence, draw near to the throne of grace, because we know that he has been through the same things as we have, though he has not sinned. And that is a major difference. Romans chapter 3, verses 24 and 25 talk at length about the sinlessness and the atoning death and resurrection, especially the atoning death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so we are going to jump around. If you're watching this online, you can pause, read these verses for yourself he, Romans chapter 3, verses 24 and 25, and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And then we ask the question, what redemption? And it says, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood. We can think of propitiation as a payment. Um, that will help for now. We'll define that word more next week. Um, but as a, as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. So we can see that Jesus' death does something amazing for us. It cleanses us from our sins. Next week, we're going to talk about the gospel. And I know that it's been a little while, but we need to set some expectations because we need to know who the creator was. We need to know that we can trust the Bible's account of things. We need to know all of these things. And I think that will help deepen our understanding of the gospel. And so hold your horses on that. We will uh, hit that significantly more next week. Um, I promise you week five has uh, much to say about the gospel and the way that we are saved by grace alone, through faith alone. 
Um, the resurrection appearances in Matthew chapter 28 and in Acts chapter 1, 1 through 3. Acts chapter 1 verses 1 through 3 is probably the easiest place uh, for us to see um, the clarity of the resurrection appearances. Some people will try to tell you that there is not evidence that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Those people are wrong. Um, there's a significant amount of evidence. Um, it is more believable to believe that Jesus walked the earth than Alexander the Great. Um, we have significantly more textual evidence, much more history evidence um, around that. We have some coins with Alexander the Great. Um, we have actually quite a bit of, of knowledge that he walked the earth, but Jesus Christ far outpaces him. Um, in fact, he far outpaces anyone in the ancient world for um, complete historical verifiability. Um, and so I hope that you guys would trust me on that. If you do not, I actually like that. Um, I would like for you to go and research this. Um, there are many, many good books on this. Start out with some Christian stuff I would recommend so that you can get kind of your feet wet and then get exposed to some of these arguments. And you'll realize quickly that most of the time um, people are looking to disprove um, and, and not doing very good scientific method uh, in order to do so. Um, it, part of the reason for that is that Jesus so widely was seen, uh, both during his ministry and after his resurrection, verses 1 through 3 of Acts. He says, in the first book, O Theophilus, this is Luke writing to the, the person who he's writing to, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up, after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen, he presented himself alive to them. Now, notice he's presenting himself alive to them after his suffering. So they can see the, the evidence. Remember Thomas with the holes and uh, the fingers and the holes in his sides. He presented himself alive to them after his sufferings by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. One of the dumbest explanations that, that atheists give for this is that they all just had a massive hallucination. Well, I'm here to tell you that generally speaking, large groups of people don't have hallucinations which last for 40 days and which culminate in a conversation and an ascension. And then they end that by hanging out together, praying together, being part of this new found faith together and then changing the world. And so I would recommend that you'd err on the side of the resurrection being historical fact. I don't think that's hard, but I, I hope that you would believe that. Uh, if you have any questions about that, I'm happy to ask. I'm happy to answer those. There's some resources that you can access. Um, there's one professor whose name is escaping me out of Liberty University that does a great job uh, in this specific field. I hope that you guys would be uh, willing to listen to that. And then we have finally his ascension and his return. Now these are, I think, helpful for us. Um, he ascends up into heaven in the following verses. And I'm going to challenge you guys to read uh, verses 6 through 11. Um, pause this video if you need to. Read Acts chapter 1, verses 6 through 11. And recognize what the angels say, what the, the two men that are listed in here say. He is coming, he who was, this Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. And then, last but not least, Revelation chapter 22. Again, I want you guys to read the entire thing of this because Revelation 22 is so encouraging. The book of Revelation was meant as an encouragement for the church. And so I hope that you read it as a Christian without getting freaked out, but that you would read it and understand this is encouraging for me because I am one of these people who Jesus is coming back for. Now, these are kind of neat things. He who testifies to these things, this is verse 20, he who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming soon. And John replies, Amen, come Lord Jesus. And he ends the book, and he ends the Bible, by saying the grace of the Lord Jesus be with you, be with all. Amen. 
And so my hope is that through this study, you guys would understand a little bit better Jesus Christ, God the Son. And so you're going to continue in your coursework now, and you're going to spend some time going through a little bit deeper on why this is. And if you have any questions, please make sure to comment those in the comments boxes underneath those lessons. Shoot me an email. You guys have my email. Phone call, text message. I don't care. I need to know if you guys have questions so that I can answer them as best I can.